Aloha listeners and welcome to another episode of the Cape and Cowcast, the podcast for everything superhero and all that's awesome in between. I'm your host Alex Burns and today I'm joined with Stephen Carter hey. and Sam Burns. Hello. Okay guys, so we've got a pretty exciting show lined up for you. Um, namely, the, the big reason, the big main topic we're talking about today is Captain America Civil War. There's been an epic new trailer released for it showcasing some pretty epic details. And guys, the big, the big detail here, Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. We get our first shot of the dude, he's in action. We get a nice bit of dialogue from the guy, so we're going to be going into detail on this, what it means for the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward. But before we get onto that, let's talk about a week, man. How's, how's everything been? How are you doing, Steve? Yeah, it's going well. I'm settling into my uh, new job now, which is uh, mm. interesting. Epic congrats. So, it's been training up for it for a while, and now... Four weeks. Four weeks of intense training, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, how are you feeling? Are you, are you energised? Have you got energy for this podcast? Because, <laughs> you know, we don't want you falling yeah. asleep. No, no, no. I yeah. felt like I've hit the ground running and everything like that. But, Beautiful. yeah, I feel like I've settled, settled down now. Fantastic. And that should help little Evie as well, because, mm-hmm. you know, she's getting big man you know I wanted to see her today Steve didn't bring her over we were going to all hang out and eat pizza but not Evie you know that's, that's crazy <laughs> she's a little too small for pizza <laughs> blending pizza sounds disgusting it's weird isn't it you'd eat stuff until someone started blending it you know and then I get that and that's a bit weird <laughs> but Sammy we had a great time didn't we at the oh, uh, Comic Con yeah, yeah it was great. London Olympia uh, so we went up we rocked up there namely Thanks just because invite. well <laughs> you couldn't come oh, you couldn't come <laughs> I, we did invite him, guys and gals. You know, it wasn't, wasn't being rude. <laughs> Couldn't make it, unfortunately. But me and Sam, on the other hand, we got an early, early start. We headed up on, uh, drove to West West Ryslip, didn't we? And then rocked in. Mm. Great fun, man. Like it's great to see all these vendors in the UK. Because of course, if you're listening stateside, it's not quite the same as the conventions over there. But you know, it's got a, uh, the, the fan base is just as passionate. So it was great to see there's, you know, Deadpool's rocking around and, you know, people dressed up. Yeah, it was cool. We got there at the right time for the Batman as well, didn't we? Of course, was, that was the main draw. We I mean, started getting, like, massively busy. And then really? Really, there's no way we would have got a picture. It was weird as well, because yeah. we went on Sunday and usually the Saturdays are, are a lot more sort of busy. I was quite expecting I, the Sunday I, I, well, to be Well, the quiet. Saturday, I think, was would have been massively busy. Mm. Sunday, if that's the cool-off period, though, it's still pretty Yes, yeah, so we got there and there's busy. these two, like, seven-foot bodyguards right next to her and they're just like, would you like a <laughs> selfie? <Yeah. laughs> this is kind of... I'm like, oh, you know. <laughs> but he, he took a nice picture of us yeah. and everything, so you know we got some great shots by the Panther. And you know, I, I'm just super impressed with it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not. I wouldn't. I don't know if maybe I, you know, I got to wait until I see the film first. It's not like Tumblr. The Tumblr kind of screamed at me like Batman. You know, like even though it was such a departure from 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 Batmobiles before, when mm-hmm. I first sort of saw it, I was. I was I mean, a bit me, sort of. You know. To me, it still seems like a, a mishmash, really, of mm. the Tumblr versus the Joel Schumacher uh, films. A little bit, it's sort, of, sort of like you know. And of course, the, the Joel Schumacher's were some of the more flamboyant Batman builds mm. as well. I think a great nod. The, the thing that sort of says it's Batman to me, is, aside from all the gar- uh, gadgets and everything on there, they've got these two yellow sort of headlights mm. that are very Michael yeah. Keaton Batman build. Yeah, I like the I way they're on the front, and it reminds me of the animated series Batman build as well, but. Yeah, you enjoyed it. It was a good day out, wasn't it? It was a very good day out. Well. We also got our mum's Mother's Day gift there as well. Mm, we did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's really into the Goonies. So. Yeah. Got a little like, map of the Goonies thing and the little Goonies key, whatever the Who's hell it the, is. Who's the captain in the Goonies? Whose treasure is it? One Eyed Willie. One Eyed Willie. <laughs> One Eyed Willie. Yeah. Why are you laughing? It's very immature. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys. So, yeah, really excited, guys. Good week. <laughs> good week. <laughs> And yeah, let's get on to some of our picks of the week. So these are the Cape and Cow sort of top stories that have been rocking up. And um, you know, we'll kick off with you, man. So so what's the big piece of news that got your ears pricked up this oh, weekend? Green Lantern's not in Justice League, is he? A little bit. The so Injustice is... League <laughs> of the Green Lantern. He's joined the Injustice League. Side. Mm, a bit of a bummer. So Justice League is rocking up. 2018, I think. 2020. 20, 20, oh, no, sorry. No, 2017. Was yeah, 2017. 2020. November 2017, and Green Lantern, man, not a part of it. Well, maybe they'll, I always look to the good news of it. Maybe they're going to merge it towards one like super awesome film. Maybe that's what's happening, but I still think. I don't know. That, that's what ideally I would like to happen, but mm. I think the universe would be way too big to cram into a film if that's what the ultimate true combination the, of it would be. Have they told what the, the extent is? Like that, we're, I'm, I'm, assume, I'm assuming yeah, when they say we're not going to see a Green Lantern film, is it like we're not going to see the character, or would there be actual you know subtle? Oh no, maybe? he's coming into mm. it. Or I they thought, just hmm, flat is, out? 
I, it seems weird. It's kind of like, so, you know, if you introduce Hal Jordan in a, or whichever Green Lantern you decide to focus on in an Injustice League movie, you kind of wonder why the rest of the Green Lantern Corps aren't showing up to help out if yeah. the threat demands the Justice League. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of like, you know, in the, in the 2013 or whatever, 2011 movie with Ryan Reynolds as Green Lantern, he was fighting Parallax on his own. You know, there were thousands of Green Lanterns that, that turned up. Mm. And you saw about five fight Parallax. And they sort of gave up after their net plan. Didn't they? they tried, to, they tried <laughs> yeah. to trap him yeah. in a giant net. And he escaped and they were like, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> no, I'm out of ideas. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> imagination is not a strong point for these Green Lanterns. So, yeah, I mean, I think they're riding that wave. It's like, if you introduce him, is he too big a character to sort of fit in a Justice well, League the, as the, well? Well, baggage yeah. he brings along, yeah, I guess so. But I still think he's a bit of a shame. I mean, I think he's... You have, like, the seven figures, mm-hmm. don't you, in the animated series, at least, and... In a lot of well, John obviously. Stewart in that Justice League cartoon as yeah, well. Yeah, also just Green Lantern in general, man. Yeah. But I don't... don't I don't really get why he can't be like an individual character on his own because the, the whole thing about the core is they don't get involved in things unless they... Do you, you think, think it's because, you know, his origin is so part of a wider scheme of things as opposed to everyone else? So like mm. Aquaman is Atlantis, whatever. You know, you, you can kind of introduce the Atlanteans, but if you don't, it's really kind of safe because his origin starts off with him not knowing about mm. where he comes from. So mm. you can kind of see him rolling up in that respect. Green Lantern is immediately taken to Oa and shown the ropes. He's like, yo, you're part of this space cop, this intergalactic police force mm-hmm. thing. And it's kind of like, if he's aware of that, he'd be aware of Krypton and his ring knows everything about everything. So you'd start mm-hmm. mentioning Darkseid and Brainiac and all this stuff mm-hmm. that looks looks to be teasing for Justice League. So maybe they're, maybe they're hanging back in that respect. I don't know, mm. I just feel that he's, he's a really cool person to just have around because I mm. think he can get around a lot of barriers as well for them. Yeah. Like like, like when, for instance, a lot in the animated series especially, and like in the standalone animated films as well, Mm. like when they're doing like the space stuff, they didn't need to have the flash in like Batman in ridiculous space gear. Like he would just be carrying them about. He'd give them like this energy. I think it'd be really cool just to have like Batman have some implements in space and just like have that. I think he's a really good person to like solve those kind of issues. It's a big deal because he is part of the original lineup. So it's yeah. kind of like, you know, you make an Avengers movie and you don't have... Well, you know, Avengers did it. They didn't have mm, the Wasp or uh, true, Giant Man in true. there, to be honest. And, you know, you leave room for this stuff. And unfortunately, I think people still have a bad taste in their mouth. And it hasn't been helped by Deadpool, which has rotundly taken the complete <clears throat> mickey out of Green Lantern as well. So it's yeah. kind of reminded everyone how sucky it is. This is the quote that came from Greg Silverman. So he's, you know, Warner Bros. Pictures, big, big sort of CEO job there. Um, Green Lantern is an incredible character. He's actually multiple incredible characters characters referring to the Green Lantern core there's real opportunity there we didn't do a great job on that first Green Lantern movie this is a character who deserves to be treated in the same way that Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman are being treated now which is with great reverence I guess I can say to Green Lantern fans if they can be patient with us I think they'll be happy he goes on to add that um, while he might not be appearing in Justice League or Dawn of Justice every beat of the movie has not worked out yet so there's a possibility that he may not even be in Justice League 2 for now, we felt that we were introducing enough characters that the best possible place we could put Green Lantern is in some introduction in Justice League 2 or barring that a movie after Green Lantern Corps or something. So mm. you can imagine if the second threat that the Justice League face or after they've dealt with whoever they fight in the first movie, it could be the Green Lantern Corps could He's, be a, an integral <clears throat> yeah. part of a union, union yeah. you know, and it's like, well, we want one of the members <clears throat> on Earth because yeah. of this. Sort of Maybe thing, so. the Manhunters, something like yeah. that could happen. Just, That'd be great, wouldn't it, if it was just this like, intergalactic war? Yeah, you awesome. could or imagine if you got, like, like, like that, you yeah. know, Blackest Day, Brightest Night, mm. and the Justice League. Mm, yeah, it'd, yeah. Be, it'd be pretty special. So, yeah, a bit of a bummer for Green Lantern fans. It looks like you're going to have to wait a while, but yeah, as Steve says, you could see some subtle hints in there, man. But what, what, what sort of pricked yours up this week? What, what have you got for us? Well, uh, um, it's the dawn is um, sort of coming near for the uh, well Daredevil uh, coming out on Netflix uh, March eighteenth yeah next week boom um, and we've uh, finally seen a uh, shot of them in their full costumes so we've got Electra in her black getup yeah. with the red headband fantastic and, uh, well, red, uh, red face mask mm. and whatnot um, more importantly we had Punisher. Uh, finally seen the yeah. skull emblem people were sort and of you were worried about that yeah, w- yeah I wasn't sure if that was going to appear at all I thought it was just going to be sort of you know just some guy dressed in black yeah. sort of thing um, it's kind of cool how they've done it where it's like sort of like a sort of almost like a 
embossed leather sort of yeah. thing, isn't it? It's not just a white painted uh, painted shirt or something True. like that. Yeah. So it does look a little bit cooler there. So it'd be interesting to see how he actually comes across that sort of thing. And how he does it to himself. Like he might sort of just sort of like burn a, burn his like leather whatever and it might yeah. be like a chemical reaction. You don't know. Like You know, he's looking pretty unhinged in the footage we've seen so far. Lots yeah. of sort of off the cuff stares and you know, he, <laughs> he really is, you know, he's not typecast at all, John Bernthal, the actor playing the Punisher, but no. he reminds me of Shane towards the end of his sort of time in The Walking Dead. Really yeah. just like, you could substitute Daredevil for Rick in The Walking yeah. Dead and the conversations are very, you're a half measure, you ain't got the, you ain't got the time to do the job right, man, I put him down and they stay down, you know, it's stuff like that. So, yeah, but what does it mean to you as a Punisher fan to finally see? Looks like we're probably getting the best version of the character ever. Yes, hopefully. I mean, that we we know so far from the two series so far released on Netflix that you know they've done a really good job with heroes and villains, obviously yep. side characters as well. They, uh, simply because of the fact they've got the time to flesh out that character, haven't That's they? It, yeah. Um, the Punisher is actually starting to win me over now. Um, like I said, I initially had reservations about the look. Okay. Obviously, compared to the car, uh, the, the uh, comics and stuff like that, he was you know it's a bit of a step away from the character. Yeah. I mean, uh, the Punisher, to, in my mind, suits the image of someone like you know in the Warzone film or something right. like that, which is a terrible film. But there were positives <laughs> the for a fan, yeah, I suppose. For yeah. me, they got the imagery right there. Um, but yeah, like I say, you know just look past that sort of thing and then just yeah. sort of really sort of hopefully get to sort of get your teeth into the character really enjoy the ride because as you say 11 episodes or whatever it is mm. it's a lot of time to spend with these characters and mm. it really benefited Kingpin in the first season who oh, didn't yeah. have I don't think he's got a great rap as being so <clears throat> one of the best Marvel villains no. you know but probably definitely now he does because he was terrifying in, in that show and they I've said it before. One of the, one of my favorite episodes from that was where they just had a focus on him and his origin. His origin, yeah. Yeah, and it was, was great. Good. And if they do something similar with Punisher, it's kind of like a mini movie, you know. So mm. beautiful, beautiful stuff, man. We're definitely looking forward to seeing that. In regards to me, you know, I'm just going to give you some quick updates on what's out and about at the moment. So, Batman vs Superman tickets are on sale now. If you didn't know that, then get on it. You know, like after this podcast, of course, don't don't be rude. Don't be rude. <laughs> don't switch away. Don't switch away. It. I mean, we're going to the midnight show at the Uxbridge in IMAX. Uh, sorry, the IMAX in Uxbridge. <laughs> you know? yeah. That's the, right. one of the few reasons to go to Uxbridge, to be perfectly honest. Um, but yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to that. We're all going, aren't we? So yeah, um, yeah we'll, we'll be sure to give you our thoughts as soon as possible after that. Really looking forward to it. I've had a, had a look at the sort of um, ticket because I'm curious as to how much it's going to make. And no, no, it's not all based on mm-hmm. our screening in Uxbridge, but yeah, it's, it's it's pretty sold out there, which is which is a positive sign. You know, mm-hmm. like people aren't booking ahead. And I don't think it's got this event movie feel over here just yet. It might ramp up in the next two weeks. People are starting to talk about it. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And we're going again the next day. So yeah, stay tuned for. Our, our, yeah, I'm going again the next day. Yeah, 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 definitely, man. It's a Batman movie. Come on, man. I have to see it plenty of times. It's just part of the course. I'm afraid. Mm. So yeah, really looking forward to that. And also some good box office news for Deadpool fans. That film has just crossed the 650 million dollar mark worldwide for a February that, release. For an R-rated release. Yeah. You know they can't. You know not everyone's allowed to go and see that film. I know everyone's kind of relaxed these days. It was a 15 over here. I think you know they're they're playing it up a bit. Only. Really Really, it's been affected in the states. Europe are a bit more lenient, I think, with letting kids into cinema screens. Um, but yeah, fantastic stuff. What do you what do you think that sort of box office gross is going to mean for for the future of superhero movies? Um, well, I mean, I I think that the team are hoping, trying not to let it sort of get to their head at the moment. So I don't think they're actually going to plan to make a much bigger budget for the second film either, mm. uh, or anything like that. I mean, it, I think it's the fact that because the team love the characters so much. It's it's just testament to that alone. Yeah. Okay. Um. I I honestly hope that they do keep the sort of the, the budget level uh, where it is. Yeah. Because yeah, they they managed to make a perfectly decent film uh, with what they had. So what, why change anything for the second one? True. And in terms of what it could mean for other films, Wolverine. Or get that R-rated Wolverine mm-hmm. movie. Well, we've even s- had sort of rumblings about you know the Batman. Superman. Well, we saw a knock-on effect of that as well. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we don't know if Deadpool was the reason... Well, we don't know if Deadpool was the reasoning behind that. You'd like to give Warner Bros. the benefit of the doubt that they already had it in motion. (laughs) Who knows? We'll never know. 
<laughs> that's the truth of it, guys and gals. Maybe when they write like a tell all secret book or something, you know, if one of them needs a buck or two. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's great, you know, kudos to Deadpool because I think it costs nothing to make. And of course, like it's more than quadrupled its mm. budget, which is a fantastic return for mm. that. But anyway, guys, we're going to get onto our main topic now. So, Captain America Civil War, stay tuned for that, man. Boom, here it comes. <laughs> And we're back, guys, with some Civil War new trailer discussion. It was it was awesome. It was inspiring, you know? Mm-hmm. So, okay, let's get the big spider out of the room, man. <laughs> we've, seen, we've seen Tom Holland's Spider-Man rocking Spider-Man. up for the first time. Mm-hmm. How, come on, Steve. Big Spider-Man fan here. Just, just, just give it to me, man. <laughs> just give it to me. How are you feeling? I bet you were uh, just spraying joy I nerded all, all over your laptop. It was, it was messy. It was messy. Oh, <laughs> Magical tears of joy. I can rumble. No, no, no. It, it was great. I mean, um, it's a completely different look. It, it's, it's surprising how different they managed to make the suit look. Right. We thought, you know, here we go again. It might look, just look just the same as Spider- Amazing Spider-Man 2 mm-hmm. or the Tobey Maguire films. But no, they managed to get a, a, a different sort of look altogether. It's very reminiscent of the Steve Ditko sort of design. Yes, um, perfect. I think what was interesting about it, because they mentioned about the CGI effects that they were ha- having to add to the suit as well. So this is obviously so the... the the suggestion that this is the Tony Stark made outfit, right? Okay, the yeah. homemade one, um, and obviously you see it where uh, his lenses sort of shrink and like like, like a camera shutter that reminded me of. That's you know what, what I'm thinking they're yeah, going yeah. for. Mm. I think that the explanation they're probably going to go for there is probably the fact that yeah, it's like a camera or something, mm. so he's got like a zoom thing built in, yeah, maybe, brilliant, or a light filter. Obviously, I reckon they're more they put it in more so that he can express emotion. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to be honest, that, that's the only thing that kind of got me about the um, reading the comics. If he ever expressed emotion like that, it kind of annoyed me the way that, you know, he was shocked and then his eyes suddenly, yeah, really suddenly flared up like It's that, a yeah. costume. It shouldn't do that. <laughs> do an but yeah, like I say, yeah, he, he, he looks, looks just that. like that, man. Yeah, yeah. spot. Does he not? Of course, Alex, Alex Ross' name's getting thrown, thrown around a lot for his work on sort of marvels and things yeah. like that. But that was really inspired from that sort of era of comic book stories. And it yeah. does look good, man. I like the That's little right. sort of black accents in, in the costume, yeah. that, you know, because... Yeah, it's just great. I, I mean, he was hunched over, so I mean, you yeah. see very little. I mean, you did see a very small spider there. I love so again, that's perfect. Very original. For me, though. I was almost hoping to see like the little webbing armpit. Oh, really? As well. Hey, you never know. That could. We be. might see that. We look like we've got a bit more of a technologically advanced spider suit. So there's, you know, there was a lot of speculation going around about how we might still have that Spider-Man just getting out, you know, in the sort of raggedy costume. You know, mm-hmm. we may still see that, but yeah. I think it's great that we've gone whole hog and. I just, it's Spider-Man, you know, but we've said it before, he's got, like, the best costume in comic books in terms of, like, most iconography. Yeah, yeah, iconography, yeah. And, it's, and it's a great design. It's so of its time and just, you know, flamboyant and out there. I love it, and it's not had to change or modernise or anything yeah. like that. And when it does, it gets heavily criticised. I'm mm. talking to you, the amazing Spider-Man costume, yeah. you know? No, I, I like, next to, like, the rest of the Avengers... When they're all like, you've got like Captain America who's like all like armored up, and the, especially Iron Man, they're yeah. also overdone. But I feel like this one just looks really, really like like Spider Man, quite yeah. I don't know, like comicy, and you know, and yeah. like, like he's going to be the real comic relief in this film. He's going to be the mm. Flash, you know. He's going to just be really that human comic to, book to, on yeah. on screen yeah, just to this, like, just yeah, from print to screen. Yeah. Like, I, it looked really good, and I haven't had a lot of faith in Spider Man to Spider Man Two, yeah, but I love. I love how he looks in that trailer, man. I mm. think he's gonna be really. The only problem I have with it is his little whatever he says in the trailer. I can't quite remember. Hey everyone, everyone. yeah, he, looks, hey, he's, everyone. He's, yeah, he sounds a little bit. He is a kid though. He is a this kid. This is the youngest Spider Man. Not Spider Boy though. It's Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> I think he should still. He should, he should sound like you know still quite fun. But he just he does sound like his voice is breaking with the sort. Very of, difficult to kind of, judge. Yeah. Very difficult. He said me, one line. Yeah. You know. For me, it's interesting. I, I'm I'm actually excited to see a Spider Man that young because he is supposed to be 15. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah he's like supposed to be school, when he started out. He's supposed to be 15 years old. Yeah. Obviously, I know that the actor is actually like 19, closing mm-hmm. in on 20. But um, like I say, that it's it's going to be fun to see someone that young playing. Yeah. When did J. Jonah Jameson hire him then? Because he seemed to go from school to the bugle quite quickly. Wow. And that it's is just... child labour. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know We've all been there, buddy. You know, our dad got a few yeah. <laughs> got a few cheeky bits out of us, yeah. didn't he? 
So yeah, like it, it just massively. That was not a sinister thing at, or at all. You know, don't, don't, don't read <laughs> into that. Like, you know, he just he just ran a business, and we had to do that. Like Caramba, Spider Man looks yeah. great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Back out that mouth. <laughs> well, well, you know, a Spider-Man. You know, just before we before we sort of move on, I just want to you know say he he's got the web shooters. You know, I've had a look back yep. as well. So he's got the web shooters. Very distinct band. Yeah, he's got that chunky symbol on the back as well. The, mm. the big red spider, which I love, it's taking mm. me back to the animated series. Yeah. Perfect. So I'm happy with that. Um, where do you stand on web? Do you prefer it when it's like something that he that's a power, or do you prefer him that he created it himself? You know, you yeah, I like web shoes. shoes as well because yeah. I just feel like dude's getting web in his body. Should have been producing that. Comes out of my <laughs> duo. Okay, yeah, 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 we got that. Yeah. So yeah, Spider Man. It's yeah. I think I think r- roundly everyone's impressed with that. He's getting a little bit of flack because it's mm. obviously CG, but you know I'm sure they'll put the polish on that. And to be honest, I think it's a bit harsh because Black Panther and pretty much every other hero in the lineup Vision is a CG effect, and I think yeah. they're being a bit harsh on him because yeah. no one else is getting <laughs> that kind of flack. So no. yeah, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, onto the onto the next. And I have to say, Black Panther man, he looks incredible. Like yeah, the he stuff really, he's been really getting good, up yeah. to just looks absolutely insane. So, yeah, where do we where do we stand on you know who are we most looking forward to seeing in this movie? You know, like expand their role a bit as well. I'm still I was still a massive fan of Winter Soldier, man. Yeah, like, like massively because what's the Buck? Yeah, Bucky. Yeah, Bucky. Yeah. yeah, Bucky. Yeah, I love that character. I don't even know that much about him really, mm. even from watching the Winter, Winter Soldier, Soldier film, and I really yeah. like. I'm not really looking forward to exploring that character more because he seems just so, like, you know, effed up, really. Yeah, like, he really it. does. Like, this really damaged if you, character. If you read um, Captain America Man Out of Time, that's where they deal with the Bucky storyline. That's actually where they resurrect him because uh, up until then, yeah, he mm. was con- convinced to be dead right. uh, for all that time. Um, and they had a little bit of backstory about why Bucky was there. So uh, I think they explained him as, like, an answer to the Hitler youth uh, sort of um, thing. Uh, going on but his real thing was like he was like this sort of black ops soldier so he was really young but he would do all the things that Captain America couldn't do like you know all the knife throat slitting and stuff like that so it's like the real black ops the sort real of, uh, scout. work yeah, yeah. There you go. so yeah there was a dark purpose to even Bucky before he became Winter Soldier mm. so yeah that, I, I love that sort of mythos and yeah I hope they do explore that sort of thing because yeah. he looks like he's still committing the same sort of atrocities he was doing because of course you know he, we see him come out of yeah Cap sort of spares him at the end you know he had the beating of him and he just lets him pound his mm. face you know and I'm with you till yeah. the end of the line sort of thing mm. so yeah it'll be it'll be great seeing him because my my favourite moment from the trailer apart from all the reveals whatever is when Tony has that friggin cool little watch thing yeah. that turns into yeah, his into hand his yeah. and man Robert Downey Jr. does such a good job of conveying yeah. so many emotions in that tiny little bit mm-hmm. like he grabs the gun he can't believe Bucky's actually, actually fired, fired it yeah. and then he's like screw you know yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's brilliant there's fear there's the Heck, where do we go from here? Because well. you're a super soldier, and I've only got my Iron Man yeah. like hand right now. So my own hand. Yeah, it's it's. Oh man, that that bit gets me, man. It was just mm. a perfect combination of this is this awesome is, and scary. Man. Yeah, this film seems like it's going to be a very emotional roller coaster yes. sort of style here. Um, I mean, my I think my the thing that I'm really looking forward to here is the, the fate of Rhodes. I think he's going to. snuff You think it. he's going down big time? I think he's going to snuff it. Because there, there's there's casualties in uh, the comic, yeah. But this, I mean, the, um, the guy you can't that, come back from that, man. And but, who's firing at him? You can't come back from that. Yeah, well, I mean, Tony will never the, forgive whoever has done that. Mm. They're friends forever, man. That you Maybe you just has. killed Tony's Bucky. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you have, man. Oh, War Machine. Yes, yeah, so I was lost. Hey, <laughs> 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 I was just at Rhodes. Yeah. <laughs> get out. Yeah, War Machine. Oh, no, I don't really find him an interesting character. <laughs> as hard as that sounds, <laughs> he's just kind of like cannon fodder. He, oh no, he just he's the cyborg like the, of the Marvel. Yeah, he, no, he just seems like this. Like war general in a war machine doesn't like war. I'm just like, oh well, I, I just, don't need yeah. it. I'm, I'm, yeah. You, so you think not just maybe are there other disposable heroes in that kind of lineup? You know, building up to Infinity War, different lineup th- sort of thing. That's the thing because I think what they tried to do in the comics was that I mean, in the comics it was Goliath. And admittedly, yes, he was another black superhero sort of thing who right. gets killed by. The, I don't think it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's nothing yeah. to do with that. But 
Uh, like I say, he ends up getting killed by a clone Thor sort of thing, and obviously Thor's not appearing here, so it's yeah. going to be some kind of other super overpowered superhero. Are they going that close to the comics, you think? Just sort of switching out characters? I think, yeah, possibly. Yeah. I mean, like I say, it's based on the story, isn't it? I They're mean, that, referencing they that comic a lot more in sort of in press interviews than they did when Age of Ultron came out, because that was very different, and they weren't really talking about the comic book at all. Yeah. If anything, when they did mention it, it would be like, well, you know, we can't do that. Josh, Josh Whedon was like, well, if we did Ultron like he was in the comic, then we'd never beat him because mm. it's ridiculous. Exactly, sort yeah, of, he kept on coming you know, back. Yeah. Doctor Who babble, the sort of mm. stuff he comes up with, you know, yeah. a MacGuffin for everything. So, mm-hmm. Who does Hawkeye? Whose team is he starting Hawkeye's on Caps. Let's, let's so, do well, the lineups for everyone. He's lost. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You think he's gone, do you? Yeah. Gone. So, okay, let's do the lineup. So on Team Cap, we've got Captain America. Yep. Bucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ant-Man. Uh, Ant-Man Wing Dude yeah Falcon yes, Wing Dude. Falcon, Falcon. Falcon. yes um, characters. and Scarlet. Hawkeye Scarlet Witch as well and Sharon Agent yeah, 13, Agent 13. Yeah. Scarlet Witch is the heavy hitter there yeah she's yeah. got the big we see her like crippling vision which is a great shot because mm-hmm. of course romance might romance be blooming might be already and that sort of them. stops something going on there so yeah, intense. <laughs> you look concerned. No, just, like, I'm just we'll put thinking, a pin in that. <laughs> no, no, I'm thinking Captain America. No, not that. Yeah. I'm just listening to Captain America's side. So he's got Hawkeye, mm. Agent 13. Ant-Man. Don't forget Ant-Man. Is Ant-Man on Captain America's yeah. side? Yeah. Oh, well, that changes <laughs> everything. Oh, right. No, no, no. Just about to say. Like, like this, what was his name again? Falcon. Yeah. yeah. He got beaten by Ant-Man. And I'm mm. just saying, <laughs> I love the Ant-Man film, but Captain America's side, it's got Hawkeye and the dude that got beaten by Ant-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... And who's Iron Man got? Uh, buddy, yeah, Iron, Iron Man. Black Panther. Yeah. Black, Panther. Black yeah. Widow. Black Widow as well, yeah. Spider-Man. Uh, Spider-Man. There's a possible rumour that Black Widow could be playing both sides. Yeah, she's... She's um, supposed to be like the really complex character anyway, so mm-hmm. I reckon there mm-hmm. could be a thing there. But I, I, I'm not you know, I'm not too convinced about Spidey, to be honest. I'm, I don't know if he's been well, taken under the wing and he'd be saying it connects to the comics. Just, yeah, in the, co- in the comic thing for Spider-Man defects. Um, so we had uh, Spider-Man got given this like really awesome uh, Iron Spider suit which could do pretty much anything um, but then he he gets disillusioned by the whole morals of uh, where this um, whole superhuman registration thing was going that's it um, and then uh, defects and it's yeah, a great cost to him really but um, at the same time yeah, it was a huge turning point. Because it is, man. Like As much as we're dressing this up, someone's getting a little bit lost in all of this hullabaloo. And I do purely think, that, you know, that I honestly believe <laughs> Marvel will give their due to Captain America because it's his name <laughs> It's his name in the title. And so I'm far, doing, everyone's yeah. talking about everything else that's going on. You know, they're doing a great job. They're, like, they're promoting the movie. They're like, yo, look at all these new characters. I think we're going to get a lot of downtime with Captain America. And I do think the action beats will be spectacular when they mm. rock up. But I don't think you're going to get crazy insight into all these sorts of new characters no. because they're setting them up for their own it's, solo it's, movies. Yeah, you there's know? way too many subplots going on in the comics. It, exactly. they can't, it's going to be confusing. If That's they try a good to do it Captain America's only got like gotten better since his first Winter Soldier Winter, Winter Soldier yeah, yeah the first I think that's one of the best just, you don't really get that's one of the best Marvel movies yeah, Winter Soldier I love yeah. hands Soldier. down hands well, I would like to see Winter Soldier yeah, with his little, his little mask back up it looks a lot better there he is cool I think he, I have seen a shot of him with that again I think that was when he was in the the sort of like oh, this, this chamber where he's being kept yeah. and, you know I don't know what's going on it might be a flashback you never know But well that, that's something that not many people are talking about it. again people seem to be glossing over this fact there is actually a villain in the film okay yeah dish on this Steve yeah. tell me tell so me we've got, we got Baron Zemo okay so this is another sort of classic <laughs> Captain America um, villain um, in the comics he's got this sort of weird sort of purple flannel over his face right, yeah. Uh, which seems to, yeah. all villains should have <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> which is kind of strange it kind of got updated to sort of kind of, kind of like a sort of balaclava thing yeah um, but yeah, that that was the original thing. I don't think they're going to go with that in the film. No. I think it's just going to be this, this sort of. It's almost like Baron von Strucker sort of thing. Yeah. Hopefully, he's not going to be sort of one of these forgettable villains that sort of die halfway through and then it's faced with just the. Any villain in this movie. movie's got a really tough job to stand out, <laughs> you know, and um, that mm. might. Oh, Loki's might, done it. But yeah, but they, you know, that's Loki. There might be a reason they're going with Baron Zemo, is and he's just a foil. Do you know what I mean? He's just a yeah. reason for this mm. all to happen. And if he is controlling mm. the Winter Soldier, it would make sense for him to, to sort of be abusing it. But of course, what I want to get onto, like just to, to round off and finish on like a heavy note, is basically the thematic ideas that are running through this movie. So we've talked about, 
you know, why each superheroes have taken their side in our Civil War speculation vid that me and you did. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we really need to get into it now because the, the trailer opens with a demonstration of all the Avengers destruction that's happened. Yeah, it was totally out of their hands, you know, and Marvel have made a big <laughs> deal about how Marvel heroes save everyone, you know, yeah. and then it shows you the Chitauri invasion in New York, it shows you the Washington, you know, you forget those helicarriers fell out of the yeah, sky yeah. and hit in Winter Soldier, and then of course you've got what happened in Age of Ultron with an entire city or town or whatever just yeah. getting obliterated, you know, yeah. so... Yeah, we, you know, the, the idea that someone has to rein in and start controlling these guys when really I know, you know, two out of three of them weren't weren't the Avengers fool. You know, Ultron was, and that can be a reason for why Iron Man is suddenly on the side because he's realised I made this horrible mistake, yeah. we need to be kept in line. But all, yeah. all Cap's had leading up to this is there are things that are completely out of our control and the people who are in control are making the wrong decisions, yeah. you know? So yeah. it's crazy. Where do you guys stand isn't on Isn't there as like... A, there's a bit in the trend I know for a fact yeah. there's like a, a, a room and it's just got like cells in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's... The, what's I meant? Surely you get a little bit annoyed by that as well. If mm. I was like, we need to stop this. It's like, all right, I won't, I won't yeah. be Captain America anymore. It's like, yeah, but you're going to have to go to jail as well. And like, like, that seems, like, I don't know if it's a but place yeah, for the Avengers to be. I think it's, it's the renegades, yeah. like the ones who aren't signing up, yeah, yeah, just yeah, to keep yeah. them in check for the time. But, mm. but it's it's very interesting. So you've got, you know, Steve Rogers, born out of, you know, the freedom and idealism of, you know, 1930s, 1940s America, USA, yeah. you know, um, don't be beholden to anyone fighting the worst dictator like of all time you know mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he's completely put that that same ideology in today's modern world yeah. and all of a sudden he's viewed as you know uh, a terrorist and you know yeah. uh, you know because now we've got a different type of dictatorship where governments operate in secret they don't tell you the whole truth and that's what we found out in winter soldier yeah he was like Do you know what man like maybe you know I'm the best person to call the shots for what mm. I think is best for mm. people. And it could be, could be a misconstrued as an arrogance thing, but, you know, Cap's coming across as, you could almost say he comes across as a bit of a villain in, in the trailer, you know, compared to sort of the sympathetic Iron Man that, that, that's rocking up. Possibly. It, 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 yeah. You know, you're, you're killing all my it's friends the media sort of thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's just the way the media per, uh, perceive it, really, yeah. isn't it? Um, like I think it's a well-known saying about sort of history is written by the victor and everything that's like that. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, it's just the way it's going to be spun. Really, um, it, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be. I think it could be one of the, 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 you know, civil war. It could elevate Marvel because up until now, I think they've been pioneers at putting, like, tr you know, putting the comic book that you read onto screen and, and just translating that fun experience, making it something fun, mm. um, making it humorous, making you care about these characters, which is not to be underestimated. That's not an easy thing to do. Mm. But I think they're still a little bit short of... And I'm not saying DC do this all the time. They've mm. made one pinnacle movie, really, in, in The Dark Knight, which mm. has elevated it up to something a bit more than the superior genre. And I think Civil War could be an equal footing. I think we could finally get something that stands to you know be studied in a classroom because they're really talking about what it means to be a hero you yeah. know who who you know who really calls the shots what's best for who you know like at the end of the day it's just about saving people mm. you know that's why these guys are here to protect us and if that becomes too complex and convoluted and they can't decide what what's right and wrong themselves yeah. maybe they shouldn't be the ones trying to protect us in the first yeah. place well that's the, yeah that's the thing that Captain America stood against was yeah. the fact that he didn't like the idea of being told who the enemies are. That's it. Sort of thing. It just you know suits whatever government happens to be there at the time. But if you were if you were an innocent bystander in this Marvel universe, you had the Avengers. Would you want them gone? I mean, fair enough. Iron Man's created <coughs> Ultron, like a massive threat. You would be a bit like he's a bit of a moron in <laughs> that regard. But you've got like a, a god for one in Thor. Mm. You've got Captain America, which is like the best of. Like whatever he was created out by biological breeding, mm. whatever the hell it was. Would you want them gone? I've, it's just a bit, Ask that, you know, it's a bit uh, greedy, isn't it? Maybe, maybe like, if you're an innocent yeah. bystander in, you know, like Chicago or whatever, but if you're an innocent bystander in, in South York. Africa or New York, <laughs> you know, and the Hulk's just blown through your entire office mm. building and, you know, killed whatever. I know they're trying not to make, you know, oh, it was a construction building, but go for it, guys. Just say this stuff happens. Mm. At least with DC they're kind of just addressing like, yeah, people die in these conflicts. There are serious consequences to these kind of people yeah. fighting. And yeah, Superman should have done a bit more to try and save Metropolis. 
but I think before, you know you'll get that in Batman vs Superman. I think Marvel are realizing that some of their arguments up to the point of you know Age of Ultron. I did have problems with the ending where they were like, "Come on, guys, let's get everyone off the island before we blow it up," you know, and it's yeah, just yeah. like, "Come on, man, just just bite the bullet." These heroes in Avengers are shooting people in the opening sequence. Mm. Don't like there <laughs> there are casualties in war, you know. So it's really difficult to tread. I find it funny how DC gets stick for Superman snapping Zod's neck, but everyone yeah. glosses over the fact that Black Widow has killed like fifty people mm. in the Avengers movies, you know. So well, that that like I say that people like Black Widow never sort of pro, you know professor yeah. stood on any moral high ground. To be honest, That's true. I mean that she said, but they're that being she held in that Avengers. similar, you know, Iron Man, you know. It's, it's that thing, isn't it? It's like, should a hero be killing? And like, we don't seem to have a problem with it in this modern day. Whereas mm-hmm. Daredevil, the most gritty Marvel show ever, yeah. he's meant to be the most sort of savage Marvel hero out there at the moment. He will never kill someone, yeah. you know. So it's whereas Black Widow's like, pk, 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 mm. you know. Yeah. So it, you you juxtaposition that, and it's kind of an odd sort of thing that they really do need to address. And I think Civil War should hopefully clear up mm. a lot of issues and make it. Something yeah. for people to talk about because there hasn't been enough, I think, no. like theologically or anything like that, where you know you can sort of have a have a debate about their, mm. their attributes, and they really are drawing lines in the sands now. So it's going to be really exciting. it's going to be interesting how the universe is going to be seen after this film as well, mm. like especially with Avengers coming up as well mm. with um, Infinity yeah, War. Infinity War. Who knows what what the what the lineup's going to be for that one? It's going to be really exciting, guys. We're going to wrap it up for you. Let you go and. <laughs> Get on with the rest of your days, whatever you're doing. But thank you for listening. We're super excited for Captain America Civil War. It's out May 6th. Yep. Yep. So stay tuned. Keep up to date with all the recent, you know, goings on in superhero universes across the globe on cavencow.co.uk. Check out our YouTube channel. If you like this uh, podcast, if you're listening on iTunes, pop in, subscribe, drop us a like, drop us a comment, let us know what you think. And we'll see you guys next week for another episode of Cape and Cowcast. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye.